Welcome back, people of Earth and Elsewhere, to the channel where the content is spam, and I am Crackers. Last week, I uploaded the first video in a series of an experimental analysis of 2016's popular anime called Yuri on Ice. In that video, I gave an introduction to the series' origins and talked for an extended time about the most relevant characters. As we move forward, I hope to not carry on for quite as long about any given part of the show, but as we delve deeper into the other aspects of it, I guess we'll find out how well I can do. Continuing where I left off in the last video, I'll be backtracking just a bit to talk about what Yuri on Ice is, or rather what it can't seem to decide to be. You see, this show deals with trying to present two genres that would seem contradictory and generally don't mix outside of fanfiction. Romance and sports. I say apparently because when someone decides they want to watch a show, they are generally either looking for one or the other, and don't expect the two to meet in said show, at least not to the point where Yuri on Ice tries to bring it, which would be about an even middle ground. In a sports anime, there may be some vague romantic subplots, or in a romance anime, there may be someone who plays sports as an effective part of their character, but we don't often get a manageable blend of the two. I can't think of a case offhand, really, because while the so-called ice skating anime makes an earnest attempt to do this, it does so ineffectively. For a romance anime, which the show is, no two ways about it, Yuri on Ice plays very, very coy. You wouldn't know just by looking at the genres and subgenres of homosexual-related content that comes from Japan, but it's generally rather taboo to depict it in a way that doesn't fetishize such, um, themes. Taking that into account, it makes sense that the eventual Eros developing between Victor and Yuri has to be a little toned down or even a little censored. One of the efforts in this series strives to make history is to take a gay couple and depict it in a way that doesn't fall into the horrible tropes that make up the boy love genre of Japanese media. Does it manage? Yes, but at the expense of being just vague enough in some points that there are people out there still deluding themselves into thinking that it doesn't exist. On that point, the development between Victor and Yuri is stiff at best, and is hard to call realistic when it's coupled with a lack of time given to do it properly while avoiding boy love plot tropes. Yuri Katsuki himself still has one foot in the closet at the end of the show, despite all of said development and the lack of any real opposition to it. The most I can call Victor and Yuri together is neither good nor bad. The best that I could describe it as is relatively inoffensive, the way it is portrayed, which is a step up even if it does still fall back on some of the tropes people ignore are there. Ultimately, the way it comes together could have happened if the characters had been placed in literally any other situation at all, ice skating be damned. Could I talk more about this? Yes. Am I going to? No. Because if you simply look up the listings for Yuri on Ice, it falls not into the yaoi, shonen ai, or even romance categories, but rather it's called a sports anime, and that's what I really want to talk about. This was a point I most thoroughly discussed in my previous Salted Crackers video. For anyone who has never seen that particular rant, I'll be saying much the same things in this segment. As one who comes from a clan of hockey players, I have loved the aesthetic and beauty of figure skating for a long time, and have had several hard discussions about its validity as a sport. When I heard there was going to be a serious anime about ice skating, I was ecstatic. But, needless to mention, I was more than a little let down in the end. Yuri on Ice is a series that chooses to deal with a sport that already gets a bad rap for being girly, figure skating as opposed to other ice skating sports like hockey and speed skating. My first point always comes back to the fact that the show says it's about this sport, but it does nothing to deal with the existing negative stereotypes that come with it. Rather, it ignores their existence entirely, or even enforces them, which is a bit of a contradiction to the progressive nature of the show that is so often praised. Yuri on Ice is not something I can cite for an argument if someone calls figure skating gay or girly and make a fully effective point. Next is the subject of how the show does barely anything to explain the sport itself, once again leaving a lot of the finer points to the audience's discretions to look into or not. I am not claiming that there was no explanation whatsoever and that the show throws us into the glitzy world of figure skating totally blind. I'm just saying that as a spectator, there should be more given to us. The only points that we get explained to us are those directly affecting the characters in the series, if barely at that. The two scoring system and how the international competitions work are where the show goes out of its way to try and make sure the audience understands it. Everything else is a bit more of a you-have-to-read-into-it kind of thing. 
Something I'd like to point out here is how often Yuri on Ice is praised for breaking the typical molds of what its content is associated with, you know, sports. But there is a trade-off for almost every trope or stereotype the show breaks. Case in point, Yuri Katsuki is already a trained and skilled skater at the start of the anime. Something that is definitely not common among sports series and is refreshing to those who have seen beginners working their way into the competitive field over and over, especially of the high school age. However, in giving us this new perspective of a guy who's already reached the peak of his career and is in a major fall, there are things that are left out that would have been displayed in the typical beginner's story. Notably, the show has been seen and loved by real professional skaters and has been praised for its accuracy, but what does that mean for the majority of the audience who doesn't fall into that category? Well, that's really good for the show, but I still barely know what's going on in these routines. There are no efforts made to explain, say, the differences between the jumps, and they all look the same to the untrained eye, much like Yuko's triplets who are unironically named after the Axel Lutz and Loop. If you say that that is a nitpicking detail, things like training and stamina are only brought up in passing while not emphasizing the physical toll this sport takes on the athletes who practice it. Are these guys sweating and breathing heavily when they're done with their routines? Yeah, I guess, but that's every physical activity in the world. How is it, as depicted in this show, that skating looks actually like a sport with all the intensity that puts it at an Olympic level? Sure, we also get a half-second shot of Yuri's blistered feet when he's been training with Victor, which is accurate enough, I guess, but that's barely more than a subliminal message and definitely doesn't cover how intense and painful a sport figure skating can be. And that's just the practice part. Very basic things, like how often the ice is cleaned and when and how often the competitors get their skates sharpened, are not even touched on, but are crucial to performances. How and why are the routines split into halves? They mention something like this, but the show isn't going to tell me, so I guess I'm going to have to Google it. I like to emphasize also the lack of Zamboni, because without the ice being resurfaced regularly, people will be killing themselves on the ice, because it does not clean and refreeze itself between every few performances. On that note, you'd think that in this, an anime about sports, there would be some form of injury or foul play that keeps at least one of the skaters from performing at their best in one of their competitions. Nope. This show is apparently too good for that. The skaters are all professionals who would never cheat or mess up in any way that would make the show more intense or put their careers on the line or make the stakes seem actually critical to who they are. Albeit, this show is once again not the typical shonen sports anime, where such things are commonplace, and I'll acknowledge that, but in this case I believe a sample of the typical would have brought out a bit more of the sporting side of the show, without saying that my own standards are unrealistic. Yuri on Ice is a feel-good show, and it's written as such, but it takes away from the sporting aspect it claims to have, even if in just the slightest of ways. Was it wrong to expect even a broken leg or a twisted ankle? No one had to actually die, but something like that can be a permanent detriment to the professional careers that are supposedly so important to these characters. Let's go back to a second to JJ's fall, where we could have easily made his more advanced routines a perfect setup for an injury, thus validating his imperfect performance and triggering his emotional imbalance. And the training sequences. They're never focused on for the betterment of the sport per se in the show, but are more so vehicles for us to get inside the characters' heads. But they do this when attempting to showcase the actual competition performances as well, and we can't seem to get a completed one of those either. Getting inside of the heads of the characters would be fine. Heck, if you watched the last segment of this analysis, you'd know we needed more of it to learn, you know, what their motivations were about. But we don't really get that. Well, not besides Yuri doing it for Senpai Katsuki. Even if this show is listed as a sports anime, I really do refuse to see it as one for all the time I gave it. And if anyone asks me if I know about an ice skating anime, I sure as hell sing am not going to point them to Yuri on ice. Moving on, I think I have just enough time to quickly go over the show's animation. Now, I think that a lot of the show is pretty to look at. The characters and general art of it are aesthetically pleasant, downright gorgeous at points, and it would leave a bad taste in my mouth to leave that fact out. I like how this show looks, but it too has some drawbacks. Let's start with the opening. It was good. The song History Maker is my favorite opening song to come out of 2016, and there's something kind of charming about the sketchy skating we see throughout it. 
but they didn't need to recycle the animation. It is beautiful, however, if I may say so myself, using the same sequence twice in a row seems a bit lazy. Also, they changed the color palette the second time around, and made the small edits to the opening as the episodes got later into the season, which is not new to anime, and can be really fun to pick apart the differences. But in this case, it seems more like they're trying to distract the viewers from the recycled animation rather than improve on it, and that seems like a bit of an insult to the audience, implying that people wouldn't notice. They could have easily stopped right at the title card and not have to deal with this problem, and maybe just played a different segment of the song to make it work within a shorter span of the opening. It's not even that hard to do. I mean, the song is going to have a full version released eventually anyway, and that's what everybody was looking forward to. Then, of course, there's the real animation problem this show has. The quality takes a dip after episode 4, but for the most part, when the skating isn't involved, everything still manages to look nice. Except for maybe episode 8, where everything generally looks a little, um, off, is maybe the word I'm looking for. Uh, not terrible most of the time, and some decent shots still come up, but other times... Ah, and of course, moving on from one funky-looking episode to the skating quality in general... Again, I'm going to say that if skating was more of a focus in this show, the animation time should have gone into the parts that counted, which should be at least half of the routines. I wanted to be enthralled by the ice skating, and it just wasn't up to snuff. I felt as detached from the performances as the characters looked from their 3D background that they skated on. The skates weren't even touching the ice half the time. This didn't stop me from trying to appreciate the time and effort that went into how the routines were put together and choreographed, but every time I was just getting into it, this happens. These little jump cuts that shouldn't be here, the over-indulgent blurring, random background changes, the stretching of the characters as they move. It was not fluid, and I may not be an animation expert, but I know enough to wonder why they even tried to make it in 3D in the first place when they couldn't execute it properly. A lot of these little cut-betweens they do, where the background randomly changes and such, they happen more often in the routines that are repeated over and over again, and get spliced between the parts where the skaters mess up, or are improved on, depending on which rendition it is. A problem with trying to be accurate to the sport of figure skating in general is the fact that the routines are always going to look the same in any given skating season. The animation gets boring to the point where we ask, who cares what the differences are anyway? He changed the composition of his routine. He'll have six quads in the second half. That's not what he was doing before. Okay, between the announcers and the personal cheerleaders giving us a basic rundown about how this affects the score and performance, we're still not made to care about the routines as they happen. I wanted to care, but it was really hard. Even with the leading guys, you spend more time listening to their barely relevant internal monologues and trying to find out more about them than actually watching the skate by the third or fourth version of the same routine. In the end, it's only the placement that matters and not really what they did to get there. I can only hope for the sake of the show that Yuri on Ice gets the Blu-ray treatment and a lot of these unimpressive parts in motion get fixed under an official release so that at least there will be one less bad part of this show to talk about. A lot of time is wasted with these skates as well. As much as I love it, rather than spreading out what could be called good in the animation thin, if the show just took most of the skating out to focus on the parts that really affected the show, and did the best it could with that while elaborating on the characters that made a difference, I have reason to believe there will be fewer animation and pacing problems as a whole. But hey, I'm not here to talk about what could have been, right? That's a topic for another day and another time. To anyone who managed to watch this all the way through, thank you for giving me the time. And remember to comment, share, and subscribe if you want to argue or see more videos like this. Alternately, you can follow Spam Crackers on Twitter to stay updated on my escapades without the threat of being unsubscribed from me at random. And with that, I say, ciao! Be sure to return next week for part 3, where I conclude my analysis and discuss... 